I do not live in hope. I work to return it. Welcome back. Welcome in, you guys, be to the patch 14.19. Patch run now. I am Camps, and I will be going over some of the, not all of the changes in this patch, but some of them, mostly the ones that would relate to York or Toplin, if not mostly all of the tank and fighter items. I remember that most of the uh also have my camera on He's black. This. but I remember that most of the uh items were getting nerfed for the most part. So let's see in the end what they stuck with. Let's see what this will be all about and see if Yorick is fine or if Elawi is fine as well. First of all, Victoria Sona, she got fucking knockers, bro. We love we love to see that. In my opinion. Well, let's get into it. Let's see. Spellbook is coming back. I'm not reading all this. It's basically saying the overall nerfing most items and legendaries just to lower the tone of the damage in the game that make things better. Don't care about spellbook really. Honor updates. Brand new honor voting experience is live for 14. Starting this patch, player will be able to honor both teammates and enemies. Oh, that's kind of cool. I guess we, we did used to have this in the past where you could honor your teammates as well and enemies at, at the beginning it was just you you could only honor enemies but now they made it allies only and now they're making it both so that's gonna be cool they're also adding like a my bad interactive emote i haven't seen this when i went on the pb i'm still gonna, gonna go on the pb later on to see specific item changes but maybe we can see if this is implemented as well is going to be using the I keybind, so I'm gonna keep that in mind. But it's basically, if you make a mistake, you can do this emote to like lower toxicity, like maybe you didn't mean to take the cannon as a support, or you didn't mean to take the a kill as a support again, or something like that. Or you accidentally took your jungler's cannon, <laughs> and now you're spamming that, but that's my guess. Ward experience, worth no longer grant EXP when killed. Okay. There was a minor invisible mechanic that still had the potential to put the ward user in a meaningful disadvantage by letting the enemies reach break level points early. That is true. I remember sometimes you would just gain experience for just killing a ward, meaning you could hit level 2 first and then jump the enemy. At least changes, I'll be honest, I do not care. We do not care. Cassante changes. I would say I do not care, but he's in our lane, so. Let's see a little bit what they're doing. I'm not gonna reach all of it because look, looking like a paragraph here, and I don't want to make this video a bit too long. Let's see. Let me skim over. So when he ults, his abilities will deal a percent, a percent of your max HP. Okay. But he will no longer deal true damage. Good. No longer deals increased damage. Good. And he no longer gains 25 attack range against marked targets. Bless. I hate that the cooldown is like being lowered by 10 seconds. That's kind of weird. No longer change direction after casting the spell. Okay, I seen that happen to me literally yesterday when I was fighting him. He was trying to push me in one direction and then during it he just changes. Changed the direction he wanted to go. Uh, an ultimate deals... 0 to 1 of his damage as true damage based on charge time? Why? I hate this character. The damage reduction and all out is also going up. Why? Now let's reduce cooldown while in all out. No longer grants increased range. No longer resets Kassan's basic attack damage. No longer goes over walls. Still goes over. I'm pretty sure this will still go over Yurik's wall, which kind of sucks. Because he's not supposed to be able to until he's ulting, but now they made it so we cannot go over walls while he's ulting, so now we can actually apply a bug fix to this where if he goes over our walls, it's not supposed to, it's not supposed to happen. Pull up damage, also up, why? But now he goes with bonus HP, why? It used to be AP ratio, which is weird because he doesn't build AP, but he, we know he builds HP, so why are we doing this? Stun duration, down, cool. Attack speed going up by a lot. Now grant 50 bonus armor pen. Why? And now he gains 20% Omnivamp. 
and no longer grants attack damage based on okay not grants that based on bonus resistance okay that's good long grants healing equal to damage dealt can no longer be reactivated early so he has to stay in his ultimate until it runs out for 15 seconds and i'll probably reduce bonus resistance from jack show oh yeah because he can ult and then as he stacks up jack show he still gets the bonus resistance well fuck sante i regret reading that to be honest let's continue don't care about tristana care about vladimir a bit because he's in our lane healing is now effective against minions uh he cannot heal into minions like he used to with that stupid grasp w max vladimir build good but now we're into items dagger is going down from 200 to 250 i'm guessing we may see like laners literally attack speed ones come into lane with daggers and if they don't care about potions we could even see like they walk into lane with two daggers because you start the game with 500 gold and with this change you can literally start the game with two daggers and it may be worth it for some champions i can see yoni riasa doing this for some lady carries x drinks is magic this is going down okay cost of hammer going down i like that even though i don't even like building this item to be honest i usually just like the uh HP, AD components. Cost of Heartbone Axe is going down. Good. It's not even a good item in my opinion. Mm, I don't care about AD carry items to be honest. The cost of Rectress going down? This builds into a Hullbreaker, so I like that. AD going down? I don't care too much. Don't care. Moon Plate. Health going up. Movement speed going down a bit. Glacier. Armor up, HP, not HP, mana up. That's cool. I, I used to like when this actually built into a uh, Iceborne Gauntlet. So even though it's nice, it only built into fro Frozen Art so far. Warden's Mill. Rock Solid. 15, it doesn't scale, it just reduces damage you take from auto attacks by 15. I saw that only affects champion damage. So it doesn't work against the minions. But it works still against our pets because our pets would count as our damage, thus it being champion damage. Alright. Thorn mill, thorns damage. Hey, that's kinda up. Ramus Tonks. Bammy Cinder. Mm. Doesn't skill, but 15 damage always. But the bonus damage to minions and monsters is super buffed, but the HP has lost a bit. Mega Drunk Cloak, best magic resist item in the game. Cost going down, magic resist going down. Still the best in my opinion. Spectral Cowl, used to be the worst magic resist item in the game. Looks like now it's actually nice. The magic resist is going up by a lot. Because this used to give the same magic resist as a magic mantle, like the base magic resist item, which is stupid. Support items, do not care. Fighter items, here we go. Which end, not something we really build, but the attack speed is down. Magic resist is down. And the on it is also down. Eh? They are trying to reduce damage, so I guess some items are just gonna be hit very hard. Eclipse, but very cheap. Now it's not so cheap, and it did lose some AD. But it seems like everything else is unchanged, so like... At some point it lost a percent of max HP part, but it seems like they kept it in, so that's kinda good. Then don't have to worry about that. Kempok Chainsword. Don't give me item in two ways. Epic and legendary epics are cheap and really readily accessible. And you're a slot fishing when you reach the end of the game. Probably meant to be great on their own. Because Chainsword is the only fighter upgrade to ice cream, it needs to be a place where it's not too squishy for juggernauts. That's us. Not to thank you for lighter fighters. I'm guessing that's like uh divers or skirmishers that don't buy too much resistance really. If you don't want Mortal Reminder, you can't buy because of Black Lever. True. If you buy Black Lever, we cannot buy Mortal Reminder. So they just want to make the item better for, for those that go Black Cleaver. So they don't just sit on the executioners, kind of like I do. So replacing at a 
midpoint on durability, raising its price to work the slot, and overall lowering its efficiency. Okay. Yo, this shit is more expensive than Black Cleaver though. Gold going up by 300. 3100. Jeez. Component used to be this. Now it's executioners into Giant's Belt into Warhammer plus 500 gold. The fuck? And this year, 450. Mmm, that's a lot of HP, baby. But the AD is down. I don't care. That HP is. HP is the way to go. That shit buffs everything. Hallbreaker damage. Demolish damage, your XQ healing, plus, we don't really build this item, but it seems like they're changing the build path from Tunneler to Phage to Dagger. Kind of weird, but alas, AD down, attack speed down, but HP up by 150. Hmm. I wish something like this would be usable in Yurik, but it's not really. Hallbreaker, our beloved. But there are a lot of changes for Hallbreaker. They're mainly focused on making a tanker item that appeals to fighters who don't convert their HP pools into damage. But clearly better single target damage than Titanic Hydra. Okay. The recipe used to be this. Now it's Tunnel, Wing Moonplate, plus Pickaxe, plus 175 gold. Yo, it's losing a lot of AD though. It's losing like 25 AD, right? Yeah, it's losing 25 AD. But it's getting 150 HP? 500 HP for Hullbreaker? Moonsea going down a slight bit. Melee on hit damage, 140 base. Now it's 120 base. But the percent of my max HP scaling used to be 3.5 and now it's 5%. This is melee on hit. I guess this is for melee characters. For range characters, that is not us. We do not care. They have our old one and lower base. Okay. Melee on hit against structures, what we care about. For on a base AD, that is lower to 300. And 7% max HP, that is going up to 10? Yeah. You see, you see what I mean? The more HP you get, the better. But I guess I'm the... I'm one of the few that actually enjoy Hellbreaker. Don't care about the range portion of this, to be honest. Melee bonus, super minion resistance. Basically the resistance you give minion, cannon minions and super minions. Used to be this, now it's going to 70. It starts at 70? It used to be 20 to 100, now it started at 70. Going up to 100, so it loses 5, but it starts out with 50 more resistance. Mm. You can make a cannon thick, is what you're telling me. And the range bonus, don't care, but it's literally half of what we have. Rip Urga, I suppose. You good, bro? I'm doing goody. How you doing, Roland? I haven't seen you in a while. One of the OGs, to be honest. Was goody. But it seems like Hallbreaker is going to gain more HP ratios against enemies. Like if you attack somebody with Hallbreaker. And the base damage of your AD against towers is going down by 100. But... The HP ratio is going up by 3%, like 10%. That's that's big. So the more HP you get, it's basically going to be like... Actually, let me... Let me check. Leak, wiki, demolish. Because I don't remember what demolish's ratio is. Demolish deals 35% of your maximum health to towers. So this is like, you're dealing one third of the damage that Demolish does to towers with no cooldown. <laughs> so if you combine this with a Titanic Hydra that gives you an auto attack reset, you can just melt towers with Hull Rigger. Item combination, baby, it's gonna be great. Black Lear, losing 15 AD, and now it's Phage, Kindle Gem, and Pickaxe used to be Phage Warhammer and Ruby Crystal, so they're putting more HP on it as you build it, but the HP is gonna stay the same once you finish the item. I don't mind it. I like having more HP as I build my items in, in laning phase anyway. I, I'm more of a tank Yorick player. So it loses AD, but we gotta remember that everything else is losing like attack damage. Like this is losing 15, which is a lot, but it's still an armor pen item. Ma is losing 10 AD. 
the shield looks to be the same, but the bonus AD portion of it is going down. So it's not the only thing that's getting nerfed. Face reveal is crazy. What do you mean? You've been seeing my face. It's shorter. And that is cool. Spear of Shojin. Not my favorite item, even though it is a good item. I just re I just enjoy Cleaver with Eclipse or other items over Shojin. And I can just get Shojin's passive a little bit, even though it's weaker on Leandrus, but it does magic damage and it does percent max HP damage. So it gives me something different than what Shojin does, which is why I don't get it often because I usually just get two I two damage items and the third damage item is usually all breaker or just something with wave, wave clear like titanic which is why there's no room for shojin and how i play because i build two damage items with the third one being split push with hull breaker or just titanic or it's like sterax which doesn't specifically count as damage the spear of shojin now it's pickaxe tunneler a hey, ruby crystal so it's going to become a tunneler item the HP is going up by 150. It's losing the haste completely. Shit on, damn, and losing tiny D. And the ability haste is going, oh. What the hell went down though? Oh, the haste of the item is gone, but the basic ability haste is going up. Hmm. Okay, I guess that kind of makes up for it. And it's probably because Warhammer is gone and it's a build path. Understandable. I guess this is, we can be very thick if we build like Cleaver, Spear Shoujin, and Hullbreaker. I can see it. But as I build Yurik, I build depending what I'm fighting and what I need. The only item I always buy is Black Cleaver. So we're gonna cook builds at the end and see. Sundered Sky. Now it's Tunneler, Warhammer, plus Ruby Crystal. Is the cost going up? I guess not, but it used to be Tunnel Warhammer and then this much gold. So they're just adding an additional component and Ruby Crystal to it. Hey, Chart Table, how you doing? Not too bad, I suppose. It's also losing a 5 AD. Haste going down. HP going down, which is weird. But I guess that's the one way to nerf its healing. But if you buy more healing items, not no more healing. If you buy more HP items, you can get more uh, more healing out of the item as you skill up. So that's nice. Base AD damage on it. Like the Sheen-ish aspect of it. That is going down by 20, so it's not 100. But the healing itself is still the same. Attack damage on Borg going down. I'm kind of glad because this is an on hit item. Why the fuck you got that much AD? That's Dan's gold going up. Fuck me. I kind of like the item in combination of Sterax, even though you rarely see me build it. But that's kind of that's kind of rough, buddy. Sterax, the claw that catch, 50 base AD. Now it's 45. That kind of sucks. Lifeline bonus HP is 60 percent instead of bonus. That kind of sucks. It, it it just getting a nerf in general with the base AD and the 60. This one, I do not understand. This one I do because they're, they're giving like, all items that have HP except for this one are gaining more HP. So Shoujin has more HP. Cleaver, unchanged, it already has a lot of HP. Hullbreaker is gaining 150 HP. This one is also gaining 150 HP. Even this one is gaining 200 HP. So a lot of fighter items are gaining HP, same with tank ones. So in combinations, they don't want to make the Sterak shield too big. So they lowered it by 20% to keep it even, but it's going to be stronger later on as you build it. That's kind of cool. But now Stride Breaker, don't care about you to be honest. Titanic is better. And usually I go profane if I need to burst somebody with combination of cleaver, but let's see. Attack damage down, attack speed down. Temper remove. The fuck is temper? Oh, we gotta look up the wiki, I guess. Um, they should have. They could have explained what the fuck temper <laughs> temper was. Um, temper dealing physical damage 
grants you 20 bonus bonus speed for two seconds. Oh, it's getting fucked. Told you, Stridebreaker is dog shit. <laughs> I'm joking, but it's losing movement speed when you deal physical damage. This is like a similar passive to what Black Lever has. If I go to Black Lever and we look at its passive forever, it's the same. Dealing physical damage grants you 20 bonus move speed for two seconds, but it's losing this passive. So when our ghouls attack, they gain 20 movement speed. And if you combine Black Cleaver with Stridebreaker, you gain 40 movement speed as your pets are attacking anything around the map. You don't you don't even have to be there. They just need to be dealing physical damage to anything. And now this passive is gone, so I have less reasons to care about Sh Stridebreaker. I, I, I want to go Stride Breaker when I can just go Titanic and do get an auto attack reset. It works when I'm hitting towers. It works when I'm using Hull Breaker so I can get to the fifth stack faster. And it works with Maiden because I'm dealing more percent max HP each time I auto attack. So I auto attack, Q, Titanic, that's three hits instantly. That's usually why I don't get Stride Breaker. And if I get Profane, it's because I'm going to lower their armor with Black Cleaver. And then with Profane, the lethality jump from it is stronger because the less armor somebody has the more damage they take from vitality so it, it as you scale up it can even hurt tanks because of that so that's why profane is the only vitality item i buy when i know i can be up close dealing damage and i need to have a bit more burst be either because they're not building armor at all like a fucking gwen or fiora or riven or because i cannot get up close to range characters to physically auto attack them too often i usually get one q in and then they kite me or I'm too low to continue. So yeah, I guess with the Stride Breaker Enjoyers on the Yorick, this kind of sucks. But alas, it'd be like that sometimes. It is what it is. It is what it is. Ravenous Hydra, losing 5 AD, losing 5 haste. And the Crescent is losing 20% AD ratio. And the Lifesteal Effectiveness is going up from 150 to 100%. I guess that's fine. Titanic Hydra, our beloved, best Hydra item in the game, in my opinion. Recipe is changing from Tiamat Tunneler to Ruby Crystal to Tiamat Tunneler. Giant's belt. Sure. It's kinda hot. It's a lot of HP, baby. Hold on, we're getting thick with it. That's a lot of gold, though. Fuck me. But the gold is on chain, so it doesn't matter to an extent. So Tiamat is like 1200. Tunneler is 11, no, 1050. And John's belt is just 900. Ooh. 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 I'll probably just do like, I'll probably get Tiamat into Giant's belt. Because this gives me AD. Like, it, Tiamat only gives me AD. This only gives me HP. Well, this gives me. A little bit of HP and a little bit of AD, which is a good balance. But we're getting this for Wave Fluor at the beginning as we build it. So Tiamat is always the first item you get. So if it's only AD, the next component would be best to get a lot of HP, at least in my opinion, while I'm laning with it or building it, rather than getting something with less HP but a bit more AD. If I'm winning, this probably be best, but this is also cheaper. So I don't know. We'll see. Either way, the AD is going down by 10. Don't care. The HP going up by 50. Bus. On hit. Percent max HP damage is going down. Like, the bonus damage you deal based on your HP is going down by 0.5%. I would say it sucked, but remember, almost every other item is gaining HP on them. And a lot of items we build, so it's gonna be even in the end. Blood Mill Overlord. This also works very great with Titanic and Hullbreaker. So it's losing 10 AD, but it's getting 50 HP. And of course, this item, I probably make a video on this item because I fought a Wukong a few days ago, or even yesterday. And the build was a uh, Black Cleaver. Well, I don't remember the order I did it, but I had Black Cleaver, I had Hullbreaker, I had. Titanic, Sterax, and uh, Blood Mail. 
and at the end this item i remember it gave me 40 ad passively just buying the item also gave me 40 ad but now it's going 30. so that was 80 ad we're at now and then when i'm very low it gave me 50. so this item gave me like 130 free ad well technically you get the point though this should c combine with all the other items but the only scary thing is it's uh it's very expensive it's the 3300 same as titanic but if the enemy doesn't have any percent of max hp dealers like no vein no fiora no gwen no brand you can buy this and fuck everybody up even those that go eclipse eclipse will hurt you a little bit but you can be very thick and if you have sterax with this the shield will save you or you can just get sky to make it so all the HP you're missing at the end against something bursty like a uh, Aatrox, Riven, or an Ectin that do build Eclipse. You can use that against them. That when they get you low, you get a big healing. So I would say this is a very good item for us now too. Maiden will be tankier. Yep, Maiden will be tankier. I'm kind of super happy that Stryberg is losing the persistent missing speed. It's only going to get a short period when we see it on it. Same. Same. Because it, it was kind of like double downing on like, I'm going to lower your movement speed, increase my movement speed, and have 20 movement speed as I'm dealing physical damage. That, that, that is also like a big nerf to, I guess, set Garen and Darius for the most part. And a lot of weird AD carries or fighters that were building this item, like uh, Xin Zhao in the jungle or Warwick. Even though sometimes they go different items like Titanic. But Triforce, it's not losing too much. It's losing like nine attack damage and hmm, haste going down. Attack speed going down by a little bit. HP going up by a little bit as well. It's still very expensive, I would say. But I guess it's not too bad now. We would have to see. ADC items, I'll be honest, I don't care. The cost of this is going up, movement speed going down, cost going up, movement speed going down, cost going up, movement speed going down, cost going up, movement speed going down. We do not Collector. care. Expensive the fuck? Fatality down too, get shit on. You can tell people should be buying this, but they're not. This shit will be broken on people like Draven. Not gonna lie to you, but nobody building it because nobody found a broken build on it, so nobody found a way to break the item. So nobody's building it, so the item's been sleepers, and the item has been inside of the game. I guess AD carry pillars just don't like innovating, I guess. But this item is actually good. I'm guessing they changed the part of it. Bleed used to be 35 of your total AD, now it's always 70. Build pad is going BF, Noon Quiver, and 600 gold. And it used to be Pickaxe, Noon Quiver. Alright. Scimitar. Actually, gold going down. That's interesting. Magic is down. IE, gold going Omega up. And it's losing AD. Get shit on. Ace down. Yomu's cost up. Um. Recipe changing. Rectrix pickaxe. Sorry, dirt. Auto of common movement speed is now is always 20. It doesn't. It's 20 for everybody. Mm. So that's movement speed, but it's still expensive. This lost 5 AD. Lethality down a little bit. Movement speed down a little bit. Cost going up by this by 200. Damn. Cost up. Ace down. Ace down. Ace down. Lethality ratio down. And haste down. Okay. Grudge, or used to be beloved. Attacks be Yorick incoming. I mean, Triforce has always been a good item on us. Not going to lie to you. If I if I wasn't an Iceborne Cleaver enjoyer, I probably, whoops, mouse scroll. If I wasn't an Iceborne Cleaver enjoyer, I probably would have just uh, been building Triforce type of builds for a while. But I don't like Triforce too much. 
I like to be tankier too. And that item is very expensive and doesn't give a lot of HP. So, yeah. They're beloved. Let's see what they did to Grudge for now. Cost going down. Cool. Now it's Warhammer with Last Whisper and 450 gold. Rancor removed. And now it's 30% damage. I believe Rancor was the vitality scaling it had. And it still now slows enemies when they're below half HP. We could potentially use this if I don't build Black Cleaver. But I always build Black Cleaver. Because now it's, it, it has nothing to do with lethality. It doesn't even deal lethality. It's not a lethality item anymore. It's just an AD item with armor penetration on it. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Alright. Profane Hydra. Cost going down. Cool. AD. Not AD. A haste down. Cleave ratio down. Cleave radius down. That shit was a big, not gonna lie. And uh, did, this is the active. Increased 120 below tower. So now it's 80% AD. Ah, so it doesn't have an it doesn't have an execute on lower enemies, so it doesn't deal more damage to lower to enemies that are on lower health. It just has an AD. So the damage is just that is weird. So it used to be 100 percent AD. Increase 130 when they're low. So now it just 80 at all times. So it's nerfed. Hmm. I guess that kind of sucks, but it's fine. The item still fulfills the purpose of being a wave flare item and synergizing with cleaver for me, so not too bad I would say. AP, I'll be honest, I do not care. I think most of these are just losing a lot of AP. This is losing AP, losing AP, losing HP. Ability power going up slightly, haste going down, losing AP, more haste. Yeah, that's the multi that's happening. I mean, look, Aleandri is losing AP. I mean, we build the item, but it's not for the AP, at least when I do it. So it's, it, it doesn't matter in that case. Is that a new visual effect on... You would challenge an ice oh no, that, that's uh, the new... Uh, <laughs> that's kind of cool. The new lethal tempo thing. That's actually kind of cool. That'd be weird if we build it on Yurik. But basically, on Ash specifically, with these items, if my next auto attack crits on the enemy, they could not choose you. I don't think that one crit. But when it does crit, it's gonna make all the enemies bleed and st stack their uh, stack cleaver immediately. And just one auto attack. So you can always have cleaver stacked on Ash. But this is one person. And this is just Ash. That people just don't build this item. Now they're above the item, so this is PB, you know. So each time you do crit, you're gonna make them bleed. For 70 damage, which is a lot. But yeah. That's one interaction. Jinx can also do it. Any Runans in Jorah can do it, to be honest. But yeah. People just don't build the item. Tank items. Armor down, Madrid is down. That's kind of weird. Damage of this going down. Cost of Nice Valor going down. Frozen Heart. They got something to read. As an part of an ongoing effort to greater compulsively while retaining depth in item chosen, we're removing the rock solid from Frozen Heart and replacing it with some extra armor taking less damage for auto attacks limit reducing the number of income attacks are pretty similar mechanic when winter's caress is a strict upgrade that is true winter's caress now only affects champions oh so this doesn't work against pets or minions anymore this is basically the passive that lowers your attack speed when you're around somebody that has Frozen art. Okay. Understandable. I suppose we take those. So the armor is going up by 10. And that's it, mostly. 10 armor is honestly a lot, I would say. 
Sleeper season incoming. Yes, sir. Abyssal mask. Cost going up. Down. Haste up. Magic resist. Down by five. And it's no longer unmake bonus. Ah, it's you're no longer going to gain bonus magic resist for people around you. But it's still gonna lower the enemy's magic resist. Hmm. Hmm. This is a neutral change. I don't like the cost going up, but it's still a decent item for us if we're in a grouping situation or we're or if we buy Leandres. Icebrun Gauntlet. Icebrun Cleaver become a believer. One of our beloved. Similar job as well. We're, we're growing Icebrun Gauntlet to live between a tank and a juggernaut item. Hey, that's us. The new 1.5 Spellblade and Front Loaded Slow should make this item mm, better early spike without delivering the U Slow's late game. It's kind of hot. Fuck. The cost is going up by 400 though. But the spell blade is gonna go from 100 AD, base AD, 150 AD, and the slow is now 25%. So I have value for range. So you're always gonna slow somebody for 25%. And the spell blade, like the sheen damage, is 150. Comparing this to Triforce, which is I would have to actually check on. I won't make you. Triforce Spellblade is like 200%. Sheen Spellblade, I believe it's just 100, right? Yeah, just 100 base AD. 100 base AD bonus physical damage. <laughs> and right now, Sheen is also just that. So now when we get Gauntlet, the Sheen damage is actually going to be stronger than what it is on live. So, in that sense, Iceborne is actually Omega. Where the fuck did it go? Iceborne is actually Omega buffed. You get the Sheen Bonk is gonna be stronger. <coughs> it's kind of cool. That'll actually mean that Iceborne Cleaver become a believer. Just goody. We'll be good on the lobby for first item again. Yes, sir. I mean, I'll always build it on the lobby first item. Sunfire. Don't really care. But let's see. HP ratio down, base damage down, minion damage up, monster damage down, up a lot. They, they, they're telling junglers build this shit and stop building Leandris. I like it. Damage no longer ramps up against champions for epic monsters. Ah, okay, understandable. Thornmill cost going down. Sheesh. Hey yo. <coughs> This shit mega cheap, bro. This is what the cost of like Abyssal used to be in the range of. Well, Abyssal was 2300, then 2400. Now it's 25, and I was going to like 26. So, yeah. So, Tormel is like in that range now, but being a very cheap armor item. The health is going down a lot. It only gives a little bit of health, but the armor is going up by 10. I remember they made it at some point that Tormill gave one 100 armor and no HP. I'm guessing they found the middle ground and that give it a little bit of HP. Armor ratio is going down though, but the base damage is up. The armor is also up, so I guess it's, uh, it's even. I guess it's better in this way because if they left it at 100 armor and the armor ratio maybe was a bit higher, Ramus would be eating a bit too good in my opinion. Hollow Radiance, Split Push item for our pets, HP going down, HP ratio going down, but the base damage is up. These, this is actually the one for around us, I'm pretty sure, because it's it, it Immolate, Desolate is the one that explodes. This one is going up. And this one is going down. Either way, the, the item still completes the purpose of why we buy it. Emily monster bonus damage. We actually just adds to this. I guess they want junglers to actually buy this too. Hmm. 
Minion damage, this is unchanged. Okay. Unending the spur is losing. Damn, it's losing HP. But his armor is going up. That's something. I still want to build this with Leandris more often, but I just don't end up doing it. It could be a wicked combo. Because each time this item drains HP from people around you, it deals magic damage, and this will actually deal spell damage. So it can proc Rallies, it can proc Leandris, and it can technically proc Cosmic Drive too if you buy that shit. <laughs> it's kind of stupid, but that's how the item works. It can even proc Comet and Scorch. I don't know why, but it does. Good afternoon, Saint. How you doing? Never given us your review on the page on the changes. Yeah, welcome. I mean, I have fun with it to be honest. I have to read this anyway. Might as well have you guys join me. Force of nature, movement speed down. Steadfast, movement speed down as well. Making people less fast. That's fine by me. We're choosing to shrink spear vicious so that it's no longer the most expensive MR option. Despite being mandatory on a slow champion who self regenerate. Okay, so it's cheaper by 200. I like that. Health down, fine. Matter is down, fine. But if we can get this earlier, it may be a good default item on us if we buy healing items or there's a lot of healing in the game. Of course, we have a lot of Madrigus items in general. Almost any every other Madrigus item is better than Visage. But it's nice if you have Sky or something else on your team that is healing you in some way or form. Kinnick Rickern, Health Regen down. The AP Shield is going down. The Magic Regis Shield. Hmm, that kind of sucks, but I guess it's fine. That must play HP up? A? Armor going up by 10 too, bless. MS going down by one, that's fine. Shipwreck maximum movement speed 20, fuck. But it lost like half of its movement speed and a percentage, but it has more HP and armor. I guess it's a good like, a give and take. I suppose that isn't too bad. I still like this item when I split pushing because this item has like a, it has some sort of sheen passive to it. Um, what the fuck is the name? So against towers, when you at 100% steadfast, it deals 100% base. Wait, no, this right? Yeah, it basically deals like sheen damage, base sheen damage onto towers, right, or enemies. So if you combine this with new gauntlet, that's kind of that's kind of busting them up, man. We like those. Be like a bit tanky, but still able to deal a bit more damage. Heart steel, an item I honestly never got to build and have fun with. Health regen down, building out Giant's Bell, crystalline bracer, and Giant's Belt again. So they made it crystalline and ruby crystal, but I was a double giant's bell with a bracer. Okay. I guess they want you to just buy the double HP and be like, be on your way. You want it to be thick anyway, right? Buy two giant's bells and just walk into the lane. <laughs> kind of stupid, but okay. Warmox, movement speed down. Out of common movement speed down. Oh, well, that's something. This item has been annoying on some characters. Especially when you're in like, you're in like a Pokemon playstyle. And hey, welcome back, Chart. Back to the protein. What are they saying? Chain Vest. Wait. Chain Vest, Negatron Cloak, and Giant's Belt. Needs to be Chain Vest, Negatron with Ruby Crystal. Health is going up. Armor and Magic Vest is going down. Hmm, so it's gaining HP, but losing resistance. As long as you have HP and resistance is a good combination. So losing the resistance while still having the stacking resistance passive isn't too bad, I would say. Enchanter items. I do not care. It is what it is. Berserker Greaves. We have people that build this shit against us online, so now it's boots dagger dagger plus 300 gold. 
used to be boots dagger plus 500 so yeah you have to build two daggers to get this item now so if you buy boots and dagger level one you know you can buy boots and dagger level one if you buy two daggers level one as Yasuo or Yone or Trinomir you can get Berserker Grease faster but it is losing attack speed in general so I don't know how great it would be but that's something Aeonium Boots down by 100 gold losing 5 haste gold up I remember Freak said this item is the most broken item in the game so I understand plating damage reduction going up back to 12 baby we're back Little tempo I spit up on you filthy abusers Still do back with a new rework. We removed the previous one because too much of his power budget was in pure attack speed, which made this other source of attack speed redundant. True. If other thing it granted was tunable effect, this would have been manageable. But alas, attack range is not that. Having some time to readjust maximum item, we're bringing the tempo back. This time with an effect that synergizes with your other attack speed purchases. Okay. <laughs> Hmm, tempo change. <clears throat> Attacking an enemy champion grants stack of a lethal tempo for 6 seconds. Up to 6, so 6 stacks. Stacks grant 5% for melee. I'm only gonna read the melee parts to be honest. Melee at max stacks. Okay, if it grants 5% attack speed, so at max stacks you gain 30% attack speed with lethal tempo. At a max stacks, also fire on an a note a note i think that's the thing we saw earlier when i was doing that ash build in the video okay that deals 9 to 30 damage increased by one percent per one percent bonus attack speed as bonus adaptive damage so the more attack speed you buy this damage goes up <laughs> based on, on your attack speed. So we lethal damage skills with attack speed items. That's basically what you're saying. Yeah. At least this time, lethal tempo is not increasing your attack range and it isn't going over the attack speed cap. Is it better? Is it worse? I do not know, but we have to figure it out. Either way, I hate fighting somebody that's stacking attack speed against me since most of them are very stack checky. And once they buy Bork, I don't want to live anymore. So I would still say it's annoying, but there's a potential where against tanks, usually you would go conquer, and I've been using a lot of conquer lately, even though I don't even like the rune. You could see me build lethal tempo when I'm fighting Cho'Gath or Scion or Orn. Well, maybe not Orn because that dickhead doesn't stand still to let me auto attack anything. I'm being knocked up like I'm getting pregnant half the time I'm fighting him, but against most other tanks or people that I do know that I'm going to be standing still auto attacking them even though I don't want to like a trundle specifically for example then yeah could do this could do this and could try this as an alternative I'll just try it in some matchups where I know I have time to auto attack somebody and see if stacking it makes me win the trade and makes them fuck off or if it's overall better than conquer in that sense Rapid that presence of mine provides fuel for champions, whittle down their opponents. The green shape of predisposes to I don't know what you mean. This new model restores a similar amount of mana for most champions without being suddenly stronger for specific ones. Okay. Time to read shit I won't understand. Mana restore used to be this and is going to So I you used to just regen 1.5 up to eleven mana or energy over four seconds <clears throat> okay and now you regen six up to 50 mana on an eight second cooldown i think i like the regen more level nine is a halfway point so that should be like 25 or so mana for 30 so if we half it again, that's like 12 average in lane. 
10 plus average in lane each time we hit somebody. But that's over 8 seconds. That's not as great as dealing damage every time you can to restore mana. Fuck. My mana, bro. Just give me back Corruption Pot. Give me back my Corruption Pot, bro. I miss it. I miss it so much. I, I usually just buy the item and don't care about mana and sell the item at 20 minutes because I literally did, did not sell Corruption Pot for so long. <laughs> I would just keep that item for 20 fucking minutes. I do miss Corruption Pot, ZZ Rat Portal. Where? Don't tease me, Tom Barry, the fuck? I guess Reza Mine isn't as good anymore on Alawi. Maybe not as good on, anymore on Yorick either. Alas, Shield Bash. We want to we want Shiba to be more specific in its purpose instead of giving true level to meek effects. So we're removing the invisible resistance buff and amping the bash part of Shield Bash. So it's not gaining resistance when you have a shield. But bonus health scaling is going up and shield scaling going up. I get it because when you gain shield bash, you were gaining a bit a bit of damage, right? So they're making that part of it stronger. So the part where you gained bonus armor and magic resist for having a shield or why you have a shield, that part is gone. But now whenever you gain a shield, your next basic attack against an enemy champion is empowered to deal 5 to 30. This is unchanged. Plus 1.5 bonus. And it was like 8% 8, 8 shield top. It, it was 8.5% shield amount. Bonus adapted damage. Okay, so it added health scaling, which is going up. So the health scaling of it is up. And the shield scaling damage that you're going to deal is also going up. So Vi is going to fist me harder is what you're saying. Okay. Poppy's going to fist harder. Who else has a shield in top lane set? Fuck me. I guess if he takes this, he, he can't take Demolish, so that's better. If he bothers. Mordor's gonna hurt if they take this. I don't know if Mordekaisers take this. I don't know if they do. Um, Who else takes this? I was thinking top lane, but the first one that came to mind was Vi. Technically, any Riven could fuck me with this, bro. Fuck. Yeah, I, Riven just came to mind. Before saying Riven, I was also thinking like those dickheads that buy Eclipse, like Renekton can just get a shield from Eclipse because he's an enjoyer of the item. So we, we don't have to think about who has a free shield. We have to think about who buys Eclipse, which is Jarvan. He also gains a shield too, so that's he's, he's getting a buff. Jarvan, Riven, Renekton. I feel like there's some more, one, one more dick that I'm forgetting. In top lane, the buys Eclipse all the damn time. It's Clyde, but he's rare. That's why I'm not thinking about him. Oh, this is gonna hurt though. Damn! Should I say that's Wi Fi Jarvan? I was about to say that, bro. I was like, bro, you, you're about to swap back? What's going on? <laughs> Pretty sure Jarvan like S tier at the moment, too. Jace? True. Oh god, he gets a shield and then he hits you harder. Stop. Cassante, yeah, he also has a shield. Uh, Ergot? I don't know if Ergot means take this, though. Because they go PTA, and then after PTA, what do, do they get after that? I know they go into Resolve, mostly. But I don't know the rest of it. I haven't played Ergot in forever, report me. Ergot one got Makes sense. He doesn't even use the shield for that. Maybe it would make Urgot's engage stronger, though, no? Because he flips you and then his next auto attack is gonna chunk. Because Urgots have been going Cleaver into uh, Sterax into tank. Potentially? They may buy it now, with all the HP on items going up. There's a potential for it. I don't know. Urprog would know. Not me. Biscuit delivery. Want to reduce mana, restoration, and runes that do not require champion interactions. So we're converting the mana restoration effects of Biscuit. 
So, so they're just saying, fuck your mana. Okay, bro, like, increase my mana pool? Hello? You know how low Yorick's mana and Lavi's mana for? Or what the fuck happens? I can do an E and a W, and there goes 120 mana. Like, bro, that shit crazy. And Yorick's base mana, for the most part, as he's in lane, is like 400 or some shit. So if I do E, which I'm using E to CS half the time because I'm being zoned, I'm losing 50 very often. So let's say I do two E's at the beginning to like CS, and then I, I find a way to trade and I do E, W. That's two E's, 100 mana, then 120 mana. I lost half my mana pool instantly. Fuck you. Give me back corruption bot, respectable. But okay, what are you doing with this? Uh, new healing, consumption, 12% of missing health. Nice, consumption, maximum bonus health on consumption. So you're, you're getting 30, you're getting 30 HP each time you consume a cookie. And when you consume it, you're regaining 12% of your missing health. I guess it's fine, but I, I haven't gone into inspiration forever since, when, since whenever I became a slave to presence of mind and mana flow. Because, of, because, of, because I was playing with Comet so much and I was poking, and I had Corruption Pot, I got used to the playstyle. Then when the Corruption Pot was gone, I realized that I do not know how to manage my mana on Yurik or Lavi. Because I was... Corruption Pot was holding me... Holding me in a bound state for so long. That now that it's gone, I have to literally go into runes just to get mana. Or I just go oom um very quickly. Especially when I need to wall off just to live. And on Yurik's wall, it's 70 mana. So if I press my W twice to save my life, that's 140 mana gone. And that's excluding me CSing with E when I'm being zoned. Damn, that sucks ass. Nimbus Cloak, my old beloved. I love Nimbus Cloak. This is what I used to take. I literally used to get ganked, ignite the jungler, and run the fuck out. But now I have to go mana flow bound, so here we are. We change Nimbus Cloaks to feel punchier without being significantly more powerful by changing a slap movement speed into a higher intensity decaying one. Your well, di distance travel is about the same as before, but your initial burst of speed will be faster. Mm. 5% of the 20%, now it's 12% of the 35 Yeah! Based on summoner spell cooldown. Huh? Based on summoner spell cooldown. Mmm, so the longer the cooldown that you just use, the faster you go. I guess that I guess that was always there, I just never knew it. Decaying over two seconds, that's kind of cool. Uh, I wish I could use Nimbus Cloak again. I literally used to ignite to get into range of E and W, and it would catch people off guard so many times. I would cheese so many kills, and escape so many times I shouldn't. <sighs> Fuck. Split tree quality of life. We have a whole patch of. I don't care. Item shop. Item shop and queuing. Bless. Shopping can be intimidating for new players. Pretty nuanced for even veterans of the game. We wanted to help players stay on the stack with purchases and overall decrease the amount of idle gold player might unintentionally be holding their inventory. You can queue your next legendary item by right clicking it in the shop or selecting it in the shop and clicking Q item. Okay. You could island where a pre in the hut next to your gold amount. A progress bar around the item will now show you the gold you have versus the full cost of completing the item. Let me get into the practice tool in the meantime. Attempting to in purchase an item you cannot fully buy will now purchase components of that item. Up to the amount of gold item slots you have, starting with the most expensive available component. Mmm, wait. I like to buy the components I fucking want though. But I guess if you try to buy something and you don't care which component, it's fine. Leaving the base at the beginning of the game without purchasing an item will notify you to purchase item. This event can be dismissed manual or will automatically dismiss at 1 minute and 30. Jungle combat notification. Junglers and base are one of the more punishing and snowball interaction for less experienced or weaker junglers want to make it easier to understand when this is happening for allies so they can 
Assess if they should assist or at least empathize with why their lease is two levels down against the enemy near the mm -hmm. That sounds personal, buddy. You don't expect a massive swing to jungle dynamics with this, but it sounds like it should be slightly more important to check if your lanes are in a good state before throwing yourself in the enemy jungle. Yeah, fuck you. I'm, I'm sick in my fucking lane. Before 14 minutes, when a jungler, when a player enters combat in their own jungler, their team receives a light audio cue mini map ping this has a 20 second cooldown so every 20 seconds if you're being fucked in the jungle before plates fall down the map will tell me help your jungle is being gapped understandable ain't my job ain't my problem though that's all i'm saying ain't my mom ain't my job ain't my problem it's gonna be my problem when they gank me though ain't my lane ain't my <laughs> chill bro chill it ain't that deep gang it ain't that deep <laughs> in my lane and my problem. It's crazy. When my ball, when they invade your jungle, I don't want to hear shit, bro. Kappa. I will, every time I see an early jungle fight thing, <laughs> that it is awkward to move as a lot. Not gonna lie. Right, there's another anti-support roaming all your life shit. Actually, if my jungle didn't want to fight, they would have patted down. Facts. Why the fuck don't you just start up and fuck off? You're gonna gank bottom anyway, right? Better mute the bottom for that. Facts. Objective spawn announcement. Epic objectives Baron, Dragon, Blade Grab, Strip You have a global announcement, banner, and sudden effect when they spawn. Okay. Tower, missile, visual effects. If you've been playing League for a long time, you probably know that first deal ramping damage as they continue to the champions. We want that mechanic to be more in intuitively understandable so the tower shots and back shots themselves should be better <laughs> demonstrate the amount of damage you're putting out tower missile visuals have been updated they will grow progressively larger pause and more threatening to the, reflect the tower's heat status that boy got heat understandable i think i saw a video of this a week ago tower plate and takedown gold without simplification pass on the way you gain tower plate and local takedown gold huh to earn gold, you must damage it personally within the last 10 seconds. Not fuck you! <sighs> I was just talking about yesterday how like I wanted to like roam down faster for the grabs. I'm like, wait, if my if my pets hit the tower, I get the gold, baby. We can just move now. And and now and now in the new patch, like, nah, bro. To earn gold, you must damage it personally within the last 10 seconds, not counting pets, and be within 25 range. <sighs> or your summer foul damage it, but only for plates. Or you are within the use of the tower. You or anything you summoned. Wait, 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 wait. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. It used to be this shit. I'm stupid. My bad. My bad. I don't like reading, bro. If if, if any manga or hentai, I don't like reading, bro. I gotta be. I gotta be honest. You or anything you summon, damage it <laughs> within the last six seconds. <laughs> You with this? Okay. <laughs> so, it, this basically happened last patch. They just put it into the patch notes now. Never mind. We're fine. My bad for, for any slander I said to anybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that this was new, new. I didn't expect to see an arrow in this bitch. <laughs> I did not expect to see an arrow. My bad, my bad. So, it's basically the same as as I said yesterday, where if your pet just hit something and you're like gradual range of it, you can get tower goal. Actually, it's not you or anything you summon within the last 10 seconds or you are within this units of it, of the tower. And this part is important of us. This basically means that globally, like last week, I we, we had a fight at Grubs. The fight finished, I had an Oriana or some somebody else mid, and she was out of mana, so I recalled mid intentionally, so Maiden would push the wave a bit and summon a few ghouls to help the Ari or Oriana push. 
And as I spawned in base and walked to lane, I heard a ka -ching because I gained gold. I stole that bitch plate just because my pets were attacking the tower. I was like, I get money like that, bro? I get money for free? And basically, that, 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 that's what happened, bro. So that change is in the game right now, but tomorrow or on the new patch, whenever you see this, it's going to be live right now. I also saw two plates today. I was so confused. I know, bro. Two plates. Hey, you robbing. I guess because it's, you're in the jungle each time you gank. Oh, that's crazy for jungle, actually. Each time you gank and your pets stay in the lane, depending how much plates the enemy is taking, you're robbing them, bro. You're taxing their dumb ass. <laughs> and they have 10 seconds. They have to wait out 10 seconds before they get a plate. And that's too long because they have to, like, proctor demolish or deal their damage and go back to reset oh we getting money they're, they're probably like I'm like why, why why did i get like half the gold for this what's going on nah we we're nah that good change good change let's also make sure that if you have Mira in the side lane and she's attacking the tier 2 tower you can just get the full gold for this you can get the full 675 gold so this is a uh, bus and change I'm happy. Potion allies, newer players can forget to use consumer. Bring back corruption pot, dickhead. Fuck that shit gone for. When you're low, so we added a notification for new player. Then bring back corruption pot, man. For newer players, I can't level 11. Health potions and your inventory will be highlighted when you are on the health. A low health, out of combat, and out of combat. Wait, low health? and out of champion combat bitch you should ping that shit while they're in combat they're dying without drinking that shit aram don't give a fuck bug fix i do this every patch control f type yorick nothing type maiden nothing type mist walker i can't type i got big big black hands nothing yeah there's no Yorick stuff in here. So it it don't matter. It don't matter. Fright Night Vagar, legendary skin. Victoria Suona with the milkers. Fright Night Nunu. Shaco Kanako. Pike Kanako. Zari Biku. Diego. Simp. Twink. Dickhead. My bitch. My maiden. Zari. Mommy. Looking like Wednesday Adams right here. And that's the patch for the most part. As if I were to give a TLDR, Shield Bash is gonna go up our ass. Mordegaiger stonks, Riven stonks, Eclipse player stonks. Let me see what else. Lethal Tempo, I'm gonna cry every time I see a Yone Trinomir Trundle. Nikes are back up, stonks are up. People may actually be starting lane with two daggers, like Yasuo Yone, same Dika, support items. Don't care, bro. My bad. Dead man's up. Heart shield. You're, you're walking the lane with two big balls, a giant's belt. Visage. Cheaper. Good if you're building healing items or Sterax, so you get a bigger shield. It even works with Koenig. It's kind of funny. Unending. Mm, we look at it. Hollow still good. Thermal, big cheap. If you see Trinomir, buy this shit. But be careful when you're sieging towers, so maybe not. But we never know. If you're grouping, this is probably better. We're probably better off just buying Frozen Art or Thornmill. Not Thornmill, uh, Omen. Gauntlet is back. This shit is like 1.5 of Triforce. Like 150 base AD of oh, this shit. Great. It's basically 50% damage less than tri tri Triforce 1. So Iceborne Cleaver is officially better. Always has been. Just saying. Abyssal fine. Situational to buy. If you're buying Leandris, it's good. Frozen Art Armor up. Goaded. Probably good into Trinomere and Irelia if you can. I usually just sit on Warden's Mill and then I think about it. When I see Trinomere. Well, when I see Yoni. When I see Trinomere, I just go Gauntlet and I chill. Also, the big slow on this is high. So now there's extra chill. What else did I see that caught my eye? Uh, this is weird, but if you have Leandris and have a Cosmic Drive, as you burn somebody, you can gain 20 movement speed. If it matters, I don't know. What else? 
Profane is fine. It's kind of cheaper too. If you like the old classic Yurik, you could go Triforce into Grudge into full tank with a Sterax or something. This could work with it, I would say. And this item is good. I don't know why people aren't buying it, but it's not for us. Fuck Brook users. What else? Did they touch Nambori actually? Cost it up, because it's good. Triforce looks somewhat stronger compared to what everything else is losing. But I like my HP builds better, so Blood Mill Gaming. Sterax is very good. I don't care what nobody says. Sterax is life. Not Sterax, Titanic Hydra. Sterax is still still good though. So Blood Mill, Sterax. Keep calling still Titanic. But Sterax is goody. Sky is fine if you need it. Shoujin is... I'm not sure because I don't buy this often. I'm, I usually buy two damage items and it just depends what's going on. Black Lever is big gaming. So actually, even though it's nerfed, it's still my favorite item. Hallbreaker with the, all the HP buffs on items. Bus! I just gotta say, respectfully. This will be Loki Sleeper because it's gaining a lot of damage against champions and towers. So the more HP you build, you're gonna delete towers, bro. I'm just saying. Eclipse is still good. Just a bit weaker. But it is what it is. What else? What else? Oh, I think I missed it. But Kempunk is actually worth it to upgrade later on. To an extent, I would say. What else? Mm. Fuck Asante. I guess we can check in game now the my bad interaction thing and the whatchamacallit yet are queuing items and in the end sona got milkers so there is oh, so let me see what you guys said before i continue surprising you think i want to go i thought the main purpose was cheap no the purpose of iceborne is to slow people and fuck them up i made a video about it like two years ago or three years ago where the way I played Yorick was very toxic in a way because since I always like let me basically buy what I as cold as the hand of death. this was I'm here I'm fighting somebody right I eat them pets jump I get up close boom I slow them the wall this was up they have this much seconds, the wall goes on now. They have six seconds to, to get, get away before I wall them again. But Iceborne will slow them, and that will pop pop buy me time to get close again to wall them again. So back then, let's act like this Scuttle is, is a champion. I queued him, it's gonna instantly die. But I would wall them, and before they can get away, the sheen is off cooldown. So I slow them again, and that buys time for my wall to come back up. So I basically like slow and wall somebody off cooldown 24-7. Ooh, that's the referral announcement thing. And that's basically how I played y y Yorick back then. And that's why I like Icebone Cleaver. Because the purpose was I have a armor item that gives me HP, and it gives me a sheen proc. I have Black Cleaver that can lower the enemy's armor, give me movement speed, and give me AD, and give me ability haste. And then I have Visage that can increase my healing, and give me magic resist, and give me, back then also gave a uh, ability haste for cooldown reduction. So in three items, and very cheap items back then, I could get armor, magic resist, penetration, damage, and sheen. So this works for Yorick, this works for the pets, and this gives me sustain. And as long as I could get these three items, nobody could fuck with me in the game no matter what happens bot lane feeds i got gauntlet mid lane feeds i got visage a tank is very ahead i can kill them this is why these are my three favorite items at least back then well, now i don't buy visage as much but these two are still very good together that's basically why i say icebone cleaver become a believer everything else is situational to an extent but yeah what i knew is dead how but things with you? in the past, or at least the last video I made on builds, this is what I did. I would say most of these, except for the lethality one, is still 
somewhat viable. But let me just go over some of the builds I would do on the next watch. Now, there's always a build of you can just go sheen type items. Sheen type items are basically items that have base AD damage on them. Dead man's ass one. Sterax works with it. Dead man's ass one. You have boots. Hallbreaker technically also has one. And you can then have Sky. So there's like no difference from this one. So the bunk shovel, it's still there to an extent. Only thing I would change is you probably don't need this, and you could buy this if you want it. Or you can just buy cleaver if you want it as well. The fighter one. The closer I got to that. But during the this year with this cleaver eclipse, I never really got Shojin. I usually, at least against tanks, the tank version of this, I would just go these three items. The next two items are always just tank items. But if I were to complete it, Profane can work with it. And then I would probably just buy Abyssal because I have... Leandris. Can't take it with you. So this can also work. The order would be if it's into an HP tank, the order would be Black Lever into Leandris, then Eclipse. If I'm winning and it's just a big tank, I usually do Black Lever into Eclipse, then Leandris. Abyssal is last if needed. And if I don't need Abyssal, I usually just get hollow for Wave Clear. This is why the two slots are usually conditional because it's just based on item combinations that i like so black cleaver and profane works very well because this lowers their armor and then this deals more damage the less armor they don't have and these two just work very well because this gives a lot of h ad and percent of max hp and this gives armor pen so these three together are also a decent one but without the uh ap items I could also stick in a Sterox and even Hallbreaker if I want to. But as you can see, these two items are usually situational. So on the screen, I'll probably put it like three items for the most part outside of the first one. But Shojin could still fit in here if you want to, and then you can just get it with Sterox. And at the end, you can always just buy GA, because GA is our best item late game. Because when you die, your pets will not die. And then they can continue. Alright, the next one is a lethality one. I do not co-sign lethality anymore. It is what it is. Fast as fuck. Technically, Stride Breaker is got, got fucked. So it doesn't gain movement speed anymore. So if you would want to do that build, it would have to be... Cleaver with Triforce, with that man's and Hold Breaker. Last item could be whatever, but I really like Dead Man's combined with uh, Force of Nature since they both give you movement speed. So some builds I go this, and it should work. But usually when I do a build like this with these two items is because my next items are very damage heavy, which usually means it's uh, where is it? It was right in my face, but now I'm blind. It's profane, and then I'm buying you can't take it this. It's because I'm going damage heavy, or this is Eclipse. I usually do this when it's fucking a bunch of fed ranged characters or mobile characters that I can never touch. So I need my pets to jump and deal damage, and I, I don't buy vitality. But I'm still looking to just run around and split bush. So that's usually when that happens. And eventually, I'll probably sell this to just buy Hullbreaker because I find out, oh, I'm just split pushing. I don't need Eclipse anymore, but I'll keep Profane because the lethality actually works against towers. Next up was Icebone Cleaver. That one has too many builds, to be honest, but here we go. Unless I'm into Renekton or Trindomir, I buy Icebone first, but usually I just buy even Riven sometimes, but I usually buy Cleaver first, then Iceborne, and after that it's situational. It just item combinations that I want, like the one I said with Profane with Black Cleaver or Black Cleaver with Eclipse. 
those are two good item combinations or Leandries with the uh, Abyssal Mask are also item combinations you could do. But the strongest one that I know of that I like that is going to be very good is Fall Breaker with the uh, Titanic. So after Icebone Cleaver, you could do this, for example, because I'm basically level one at the moment, to be honest. Let me just level up to at least level three. I don't need Maiden. To most, life is fleeting. To me, it and is And the plates are up, so I guess it's not going to be too bad. But I can show this. It did buff it, so wait before I hit it. You can basically stack Call Breaker on minions. So it's not as bad as it would say. And then you can stay on the fifth the proc. Then when you hit the tower, now I have demolished too, but that's when you proc it. And then you auto attack Q Titanic. And that's what you will keep doing. And each time you proc Call Breaker, it's gonna deal a lot of damage. It deals like one third of a uh, demolished damage. So that's why these two together is a good item combination. And since both of them have HP ratios, this has 3% AP ratio, and then the other one has 4% and 9%. Because of that, it works with other HP items. So in that sense, you could get Sterax to get a shield for it, or you can get Blood Mail. Where is Blood Mail? Is it on our items? It should be somewhere in here. And of course, the more HP you have, the more more damage you're gonna get from this as well but usually at that point it's better to not have Iceborne but that's a different build so I'm not gonna go over that one Even to but usually with Iceborne Cleaver this is what I usually do but you can do anything with Iceborne Cleaver to be honest you can just anything the basic one from the past which is Visage with Sterax and the last item is up to you which in this case would be Hallbreaker or take it with you. I can be on the okay. Hallbreaker or Deadman or GA. It just depends what you need. You can just buy Sky as well. It's situational. But in this case, it's because, again, item c combinations. This just increases your shielding and healing. So Sterex gives you a shield, and Sky he gives you the healing. So it just depends, but the basic is just these two items together. Next I had Hybrid Monk. That's basically what I kind of explained at the beginning. Which is just Cleaver into Leandris, then Abyssal. If you need more magic this, you can buy this one for Wave Clear for your pets. Because... I guess now I do summon Maiden. If our pets kill anything with this item, for those that don't know, it deals AoE damage. So if you have this out in the side lane, they can just have a wave clear for you at all times. Also, anything you right. kill as well, so... Yeah, it works with some form of wave clear. But the main purpose is you just have Maiden released or have ghouls out, and they'll just give you extra pushing power. But usually, in this build, you wouldn't need more magic with this, so because of that, that is not included. Now, the item combination that I wanted to work and do all the time was with uh, Unending Despair because of this stupid combination. If I have enemies around there, right, and I'm in combat, when it drains from the enemies, let me make myself low. The healing doesn't specifically matter. And when I get myself low and I'm in combat, right? I don't even have to do much because the item will just go off. The drain will actually apply Leandris to everybody else. So this is again item combination. Abyssal lowers their magic resist. This drains the enemies, which now if I want or need more magic resist, I can buy Visage to increase my healing. But also it applies the burn to the enemies. So if you're ever, if you're ever grouping for whatever reason, you could do this instead. And if you need more armor for whatever reason, you can then buy Thornmill, because this also deals magic damage to people that attack you. Are we gonna do this often? No, but it exists. It exists if you find yourself in a situation where you cannot group up. 
and then you do this version of this build. But usually, this is not what we do. We just stop at these two items and everything else. The last two items, situational. You never know what's going to happen or what you're going to need. But you can see the good option that you have. And the last one is extra thick monk. That's when you got a BBC on you. Extra thick. Now in the build, I had hard steel. I tried hard steel very often. Also report me. One second. I forgot to unmute the music. Cuck. But in the past, I tried to build hard steel. But it just didn't work out. It was also very expensive. So usually when I do thick rick, I just do cleaver. In the Titanic, if I can split push, I get Hullbreaker immediately. If I cannot, I buy something else that's usually situational. And then the build just makes itself like this. And I'm very tanky. And last item, because we have a lot of HP, it becomes this. Don't bury me with it. You can't take it. The only item from this that you can take out is honestly. Taking out anything feels bad, but sometimes you may see me have Iceborne instead because I went Iceborne Cleaver and then I got this instead. But I can also just remove this and buy a Visage if sometimes needed because item combination. Life. See you again. But now I have Stera Titanic alone, so Titanic can work with Hullbreaker because of what happened earlier. So yeah. You just have to work off item combination and what you're building towards. Because with this buff where you're very tanky now, if I increase my level to like, we're split pushing a level 14. If I reach this tower, even without demolish, and I stack up my Hullbreaker, it's already at 5, so the first hit, that's Hullbreaker. Auto, Q, Titanic, 4th hit, 5th hit. That's Hallbreaker again. Auto Q. And yeah. This is gonna be inside of the game. And the damage will be stupid. So when I do have Demolish, what do you think is gonna happen if I ever get to the tower? Hallbreaker, Auto Q, Auto Titanic. The towers are gone. Now for backdooring, it's gonna be even more stupid, specifically because. Nexus towers have less HP than, uh, whatchamacallit, they have less HP than normal towers. So here, Hallbreaker proc, Demolish proc, Auto Q, Fork hit, Hallbreaker proc, Auto, Q, Auto, Hallbreaker again, Auto, Q, Titanic, and the last hit will just end the game. So, those are the builds you could do, and there are more, but the builds are mostly focused on item combinations. But that's it for this patch rundown and what you can build on Yurik. See you guys next time, and thank you for watching. Stay safe, and stay blessed. Oh, I'm tired, and it's dark as fuck in my room. I probably look like a fucking zombie out here. Oh, and lastly, if you do want the item set you saw in the video, I will be making one and linking the text for it that you can paste to import it into your game in the video description or in the comments, or you can probably find it on Discord. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you next time. I think stay safe and stay blessed. Water for the living, shovel for the dead.